Welcome in, everybody, to Alabama at Kentucky Instant Reaction. Stacy Blackwood with Jake Thomas as we break down this uh, big win for Alabama. Now they have clinched the SEC West and will ma be making the trip to Atlanta for the SEC Championship game. So uh, not sure many folks believe that would happen after the first three weeks of the season, uh, but here they are. So great credit to Coach Saban and this team for getting the job done, Jake, and you know, they just continue to get better each and every week. We're going to dive into this matchup here in just a minute, but we do have some polls up in the chat. Make sure you uh, look at those. Uh, the first one is, what rating will you give the Crimson Tide's performance today? A, A plus, A, B, or a C? And then also, should the officials be uh, held accountable publicly? Why? Mm -hmm. or yes or no? Please let us know there. And, Jake, I, I honestly want to start with, a, with the officials because, look, I, it, it's easy to complain about the officials, especially after you win, because then it doesn't sound like you're you're whining because you lost. But Jake, the officials were horrendous in this game. Jake, horrendous. They were. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, let's just go back to to the latest thing. How you cannot stop play and review that mm -hmm. fumble, even if you uphold the call? How can you not stop play and review it? Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, you, you could say that Kentucky was gifted all three of their touchdowns. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in the first half, Kool-Aid muffs the punt, and then they call the pass interference on Caleb Downs in the end zone, which puts the ball at the two-yard line, a ticky-tack mm -hmm. call there. Uh, mm -hmm. Then then in the second half, Jake, not only the the one where they – they they looks to me like it was a fumble and a clear recovery by uh, Christian Story. Mm -hmm. I, I just – it's unbelievable to me how bad officials can be, Jake. And 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 the reason they continue to be bad is because there's no accountability to the public. They they know they don't have to, you know, after Texas, Jalen Milrow has to go – after that Texas loss, he has to go answer tough questions to the media. Right. But you know what? These officials don't. It's just, hey, they get to pack up and go home like nothing happened. Yeah. And yeah, it, I agree, Stacey. It, it, it's so frustrating, Jake. And and the truth is, you can't even enjoy a blowout win because the officials are that bad. 41-15-92 were completely mugged all night, and they finally get a holding penalty when the game's completely over. <laughs> yeah, the last play of the game, pretty much. I mean, it, Jake, it, it's it's. I'm sorry. Something has to be done, and I'm going to write about it. I, I do. I do takeaways for Roll Tide Wire, part of the USA Today Network. After every game, and one of my takeaways, Jake, I'm just going to give everybody a, a a little behind the scenes. It's going to be, and I'm I'm calling out the officials, Jake. I'm calling out Greg Sankey. I'm calling out the director of SEC officials, and, and whether it gains any traction or not is remains to be seen. But accountability has to be made, Jake. It, it's it's each and every week. It's not just against Alabama. It's not just for Alabama. It's in every game against every team. The officials are flat out bad, and something has to be done about it. Yeah, I agree, Stacy. Uh, but one of the other calls that it was kind of strange was on, on our last drive on the third down play, where your tie just threw an absolute beautiful pass to to uh, Kinselman. You know, on a third down play, they called offensive you know pass interference and and i think uh it was on law and i'm like he was at the line of scrimmage blocking like it was a run play i'm like what what the crap's going on here i don't like this is ridiculous but and then of course the 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 soft hit in the you know head area i mean they got to do something about that because whenever you're making a football move you know it don't when when you're engaged with your guy you see him and you're looking for the ball. And if you're making a football move and you hit the hit the quarterback in the head, that's not that should not be your fault. You're trying to make a football move to get to that quarterback, but yet you're being punished for, for hitting him in the head. And it's not it's not hard contact at all. I mean it it's not, just like it's yeah. just that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't it's, know. It's, it's insane, Jake. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, nothing's gonna change because they're never gonna hold the officials accountable publicly. Right. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. It's 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 sad, but that's the truth of the matter. Yeah. All right, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this game, Jake. Mm -hmm. uh, please let us know your thoughts in the chat. Please let us know your thoughts for the couple polls that we do have up. Jake, another great performance from Jalen Milrow. Uh, Fifteen to twenty-two, two thirty-four through the air, three touchdowns. Added another three touchdowns on the game. The first Alabama player ever a quarterback ever to throw for three touchdowns and rush for another three touchdowns as well. Mm -hmm. 
Jake, this dude just gets better and better every week. He is turning into a reason Alabama wins instead of a guy who could potentially hold them back. So the, the development of Jalen Milrow and the adjustments that Tommy Reese and Nick Saban have made within this Alabama offense, uh, it, it's just incredible what they've been able to accomplish over the last few weeks, really since the bye week uh, and really the second half of that Tennessee game on, this offense has looked like a completely different unit. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. Props to Milro. Uh, I mean, he just continues to to improve each and every week. Now he did he did make a boneheaded play thrown across his body on mm -hmm. the interception, but he come right back out in that next drive and you know he settled down and, and you know he he led it. Other than that, he had a great game. Two things I want I want to mention. Uh, number one, as you see right there, is zero sacks. You talk about improvement. This offensive line is improving each and every week as well. Um, Caden and Kentucky's Foster. got a pretty decent front. Yeah, they got they got a good seven. front. Their front seven is really good, and we held held their own. Caden Proctor, I watched him a lot of the game. He he never it, it seemed like he never got pushed back into into the face of, of Milro. Pretty much, uh, he he held his ground. The other thing is the off the red zone efficiency with this year's team than previous year's teams is incredible. I mean, I remember. I mean, just a few years ago, even with Bryce Young, we would get in the red zone and we couldn't put the ball in for nothing. We'd have to sell for field goals. This team finds a way to get into the end zone, and and I feel like that's a catalyst and and you know of improvement for you know our new offense coordinator, but also team as well, and the mentality of this and the makeup of the team. Yeah, I think I think there's a few factors that 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 help that cause. One, you have a quarterback that you know is probably the best athlete on the field at all times. So that helps. Uh, I think you have a variety of weapons. And then I think Tommy Reese has figured out a way to use all those weapons and create mismatches that he likes. I mean, on the first touchdown to, to Amari Nyblak, Jake, uh, oh. we, we, Alabama's been running a lot of flood concepts. And I think even uh, Jordan Rogers talked about that a lot in the game. And th then what they did there, they isolated uh, Nyblak on, on, a, on a safety – with zone it's really zone coverage with a linebacker playing underneath and a safety playing over the top, but you run play action and then you leave any kind of window open for, for Milro. He's going to find it. And he, he placed the ball in, in now black's hands and just the growth of Milro as a passer on, on the touchdown pass to Kobe Prentice, where he, he steps up, not only does he step up in the pocket, but he's stepping up and he's also kind of rolling right a little bit to, to make the throw to Prentice across the field. A, an easier throw so right. just the, just his his pocket awareness his mm -hmm. his development of of just reading the defense is all just got extremely better and uh it's just a lot of fun to watch him grow and because he's such an easy guy to root for jake i mean that that smile is is infectious mm -hmm. uh he, he plays hard you see he goes out with an injury comes back and i think the next play is when he throws the touchdown to amari nye black so Yep. Just uh, he's just he's just a baller, Jake, and he's a lot of fun to watch. And you see, you know, Burton misses the game. Uh, he wakes up today sick, uh, but but Kobe Prentice steps up. Jalen Hell mm -hmm. steps up. The tight ends step up and make some catches. So, just an all around great performance from this Alabama team. They got in a little bit of a law there in the late late in the second quarter, but they picked it back up in the second half and finished the game really strong. So, really proud of the effort for, from Alabama today. Yeah, I was very, you know, we talked about energy in our in our pregame show. I wanted to see what the energy was going to be like. We come out really strong, had a lot of energy, uh, and then it kind of kind of got derailed with the with the muff punt, uh, kind of swung the momentum. We kind of weathered that storm. I, I say that a lot uh, through the second quarter, and we found it late in the second quarter again, and we just kept it through the third and fourth quarters in the, in the second half. So I was really proud of their energy level uh, coming out right out the gate. Uh, we need that every single week, you know, I feel like, because this team is special, man. Yeah, and, and the running game continues to get better and better. This mm -hmm. is a tough Kentucky team to run against, and, and I thought overall a really good, you know, see right there, McClellan mm -hmm. 10 for 46, Haynes 6 for 33, you know, Milro added 33 yards on the ground. So, you know, Jam Miller was good there at the, at, at the goal line situation. So uh, just the, the running game, while it's not elite by any stretch, they do enough in the running game that it keeps the defense honest, not only of, of Milrow's ability to hit the, hit the deep shot, but how you play him in passing situations because of his threat to run and escape the pocket. So the fact that Alabama can, can pick up good yardage on first and second down 
on, on the ground is just going to make this offense that much better. And they just continue to get better each and every week. And we already know what type of defense this Alabama team has. And, you know, uh, forget the, those 21 points you see on Kentucky's scoreboard. Uh, we, we talked about it in the opening. The, the referees really mm -hmm. and, and Kool-Aid's muff punt really aided that Kentucky offense, uh, I'm not sure they had 250 yards of total offense in the game, Jake. So this defense just continues to play really well. And uh, 253, you see that? And, and mm -hmm. they had one run of 74 yards, uh, you know, down there and, and mop-up yep. duty. So uh, they, basically, the, yep. in real time, Alabama held them to less than 200 yards. So just a great effort from the defense. Terry on Arnold. Yeah, they have 95 rushing yards and 74, and 74. Come, on, 74 <laughs> yeah. come of it on one play. Uh, in mop up time, so right. just a great effort from this defense, Jake. Uh, really, really proud. Terry and Arnold made a great interception there in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they force a fumble in the first half. Just this defense is flying all over the place, Jake, and they're a lot of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And and like you said earlier, Stacy got robbed of another fumble right there at the goal line. So I mean, they could have had what three turnovers today, four, you know, perhaps. So. You know, it's it's incredible. This defense is just like you said, swarming all over the all of the field. I thought uh, Campbell, he's been playing well, but without without his sidekick uh, Lawson today, he really stepped up and had a, had a really good game. Uh, I really thought that the middle what was really good, the front seven especially. Um, and uh, you know, I think I on that screen there a while ago, uh, they only had eleven first downs, so that that was really good. We you know, Leary, we we talked about how. Ray Davis, we couldn't let him beat us. And for four, all four quarters, he didn't. He had 18 – I think he had like 18 yards. or They had a whole total of 18 yards up to a point before that big run. You know, so we shut down the running game, and we wanted Leary to beat us, and he couldn't. He's just not that type of guy. He's a really good quarterback, but he's not one that you can put on, put him on your back and say, okay, I'm going to lead my team to victory. He's just not that type of guy. And we had him in, in fits all day, man. Yeah, yeah. Go, go. Scroll up there to uh, Ray Davis's stats, Jake. I, I, I thought Alabama did a great job, you know, slowing him down, and that was really the nice. difference in the game defensively for Alabama. Because, I mean, you, you see there, twelve carries yeah. for twenty six yards. Yeah. I mean, you'll you'll against the second leading rusher in the SEC, you'll mm -hmm. take that every day. And you see, outside of that seventy four yard run, Kentucky mm -hmm. did absolutely nothing on the ground against Alabama, and nope. and and. That was, the, that was the difference in the game because it forced Devin Leary to throw the football. And you see that just 17 to 31 for 158 yards, sacked yeah. three times. And if and if Alabama's rushers wasn't mugged uh, about 47 <laughs> plays throughout the game, they would have had twice that many sacks. So no. uh, just, just this defensive front creates so much pressure on opposing quarterbacks that they have to be elite or it's going to be tough for them to make plays against this, this secondary. Yeah, you're right, man. Speaking on that front, you know, Boyd B again had another big game. Uh, he had to have a sack. Payne, you know, Payne early on, I think he got injured in uh, in warmups, but uh, he had a, you know, he come out and had a really good game as well. Uh, you see Otis. So the defensive front for Bama uh, continues just to be one of the strong points on this defensive side. I feel like if the defensive line is playing well, then those linebackers and secondary know, hey, we don't have to worry about anybody like get into the second level because the defensive front is playing up, you know, really well, they're going to bottleneck either the quarterback or the running back and, and, and contain them. We can focus on our guys. And that's what this offensive line is or defensive line has done this year. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I mean, I, I think defensively, you're only going to be as good as your front seven is Jake. And I think from a front, we need to get Deontay Lawson back. I, I yeah. thought Trez Marshall was okay. But you could you could feel the, the presence of Deontay Lawson that he was missed his right. ability to play the run and, and shoot gaps and he's just he's just a little quicker than what Tresman Marshall is and, and and I thought you could see the difference a little bit without without Lawson on the field uh, you get Chad Nuga next week so you know maybe I hate to you know it's a, it's it's a pushover game but if, you know let's call a spade a spade Alabama should take care of Chattanooga whether mm -hmm. if I was playing middle linebacker next week so <laughs> right. Um, uh, you know, maybe you let Lawson get heal up another week and, you know, he's ready to go for the Iron Bowl there to, to close out the season. But I also think, Jake, it's big that you, you – sorry, you come out and you you beat Kentucky just – I mean, you blow out Kentucky. Right. Kentucky was never in this game. They were out of the game the moment the, the Alabama scored. 
the first mm-hmm. time. Yep. You, you could just sense that album would come in uh, ready to play today. And, and like you mentioned, that was kind of a, not not surprising, but considering the, the win they were coming off last week with all the injuries they kind of had leading up to the game, that they might come off, start off a little sluggish. That was not the case. They jump mm-hmm. up 21 to nothing. And, and, you know, this game is quickly getting out of hand. And, uh, but a- Alabama just really showed up and showed out today. And, and now they don't have to go down to Auburn with the nerve of having to beat Auburn to win the SEC West. Yeah. So that, that's already taken care of. You can go down there, you can play loose, you can play free and just play your game and, and you know, take care of a team that you should beat. You know, crazy things do happen down there on the Plains. But we'll talk about that, you know, next week. But, you know, looking ahead, Jake, Alabama does – they win the West. They will be playing in Atlanta. Most likely going to be Georgia unless something just crazy happens. I mean, for Georgia not to, to make it to Atlanta, they would have to lose today to Ole Miss and then lose again to Tennessee next week. So mm-hmm. – uh, a lot has to happen for it not to be Georgia. I, for one, and am, am hoping that Georgia is undefeated when Alabama plays them in the SEC championship game. What What about you? Yeah, I feel like if if they are undefeated, our resume is looks better. Is I mean, it looks better now compared to Oregon's, but it's just the way the committee is looking at it. But if we have a a win over an undefeated Georgia in the SEC championship game. Our resume is just, just that much better over Oregon and perhaps pushes us over Texas and Oregon for, for that number four spot, potentially, depending on how the rest, rest of it plays out. But I really want Georgia to be undefeated because there's a lot of talk about Georgia, you know, and rightfully so. They won the last two championships and, and they're calling themselves a dynasty and the dynasty of Alabama is dying. Alabama still got a little bit to say about that, I do believe, and, and so does Saban. So I want to, I want them to be undefeated, and we just go in there and play our game, and just let let it play out on the field, and we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I, I want to say this: whoever controls the graphics for the network that shows the game and releases the college football playoff, why are they saying that Tennessee is Alabama's key win <laughs> yeah. when they're ranked 13 or what, whatever they are, and Ole yeah. Miss is literally a top-10 team and Alabama beat them? Why is right. that not Alabama's key win? By two touchdowns, by the way. Yes, by two <laughs> touchdowns. I, I, yeah. I, it's, it's like they, they're trying to uh, say that Alabama's resume is not that good. It, it, right. It, I don't understand, Jake. It's I mean, Alabama ha- has the has a win over number. I think they're number nine. Ole Miss no. is number nine mm-hmm. in there. So yep. so they're top ten, top fifteen. You've got a win over over Tennessee, and I'm not sure exactly where Ole Miss or LSU fell. I think they're nineteenth or twentieth. But by the end of the year, they're probably a top fifteen team because I don't really see them losing again with Jane Daniels out there. So they're probably top 15. The only blemish is playing t- Texas in the, in the very second game of the season. And Alabama's a much different team than that team that played Texas the second game of the season. So, no doubt I mean, about it. I'm sorry. Our resume is there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's a shame that the committee is, is, is not doing their due diligence and ranking the teams properly. And right. I'm not just talking about it. Look, Texas at this moment should still be ranked ahead of Alabama. Mm-hmm. But there ain't no way in hell that Oregon should be ranked ahead of either one of them. No, no, it's, no way. It's it's unbelievable to me. Who? I mean, how many teams did they play in the top in the top ten? Washington, right? Is that their only top ten? Yes, ten? that's the only. And they got the beat. Only, that's the only. Yeah, yeah they played. They played two ranked teams. Mm-hmm. They got beat by one, and mm-hmm. they beat Utah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and Utah's faltered since then. Oregon's strength mm-hmm. of schedule is sixty third. Uh, Texas is sixth or seventh, and Alabama's is you know sixth or seventh. One, what they're like right there side by side, right? Yep, but hey, Oregon's better, yeah. <laughs> I just I just think they want to get a Pac 12 team in there for the last year, you know, they're, the Pac 12 oh, existence. So they're 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 Pac 12 hungry, that's for sure, exactly. Um, Tuskegee Airmen, oh, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, he yeah. was saying he is not a Heisman candidate. Is he talking about Muro, I guess? Yeah, I'm not sure. What what you mean, Lonnie? You talking about Muro, Lonnie? Tuskegee Airman said uh when our 
uh, when our cornerbacks are uh, locking up the receivers, our day line can go crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 shout out to Trey Amos. He he come oh, in and man. played great today. Did not give up anything. Allowed Terry on Arnold to play uh, star uh, for mm -hmm. most of the contest. And and when and when Alvin was in their nickel package and. And uh, I just, I just think that Amos is, is man, he's showing that he's a starter worthy. Absolutely, Lonnie did say he said Milrose, but Milro is what he, he's. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I, he's not a candidate, but I think you could start to put him in the conversation. I is mean, he going to win it? No, but yeah, the dude's got what uh, ten touchdowns in the last two games. Yeah, they saw it. There was a graphic that played during the game. The first five games of the season, he had 11 total touchdowns. And the last two games, he's had 10 total touchdowns. So, I mean, the improvement. I yeah. mean, well, and, and, and look, yeah. uh, you got you, you have to come from a team that's winning. Right. Alabama's winning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, obviously, right now, I think Penix, Bo Nix, uh, Jaden Daniels, I, I think those, I mean, am I missing somebody? I feel like I'm missing somebody. Forget Caleb Williams. He's toast. Yeah, he's done. They're not um, wearing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, after that, I mean, who, who, who are you going with? Right. I mean, Jordan Travis, maybe. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if, if Florida State yeah, I mean, I, to I, win. I, but... think, I think he's up there for sure. I think you got to I think you got to mention Jordan Travis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But other than that, I mean – Maybe he's – I mean, after that, Milrow has got to be fifth, sixth, seventh, somewhere on that list, I would say I, right he, now. I mean, at this point in the season, he's definitely top ten. And if he keeps playing, mm -hmm. the these the, he finishes the regular season, you know, maybe he scores another four or five touchdowns over the final two games of the year, mm -hmm. maybe even more than that. I mean, it is Chattanooga. You, he could put up some massive numbers there. Uh, yeah. you, play all, you play well, you beat Auburn, and then you go in and you – let's say you beat Georgia – in the SC championship game and he has four touchdowns. I don't know how he's not sitting up there in New York. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying he should win. I'm just saying uh he's he's should certainly be in the in the conversation. Yeah. Jay Barry said if Reese had been calling this type of offense all year, Miller would absolutely be a candidate, but his stats won't be good enough for them. I think well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I I'm just gonna say, you know, I think it was more of a learning period, not only for Reese. But for Milrow as well, to and and the team to figure out what what our strengths were offensively with Milrow. I think once Reese and after, especially after that South Florida game, you know the coaching staff came together and said, "Okay, this is what we got. You know, this is what we're going to have to do to be successful." And Milrow gives us the best shot. And they finally just took the training wheels off of off of Milrow, and you see see what's happened in the last two to three games. He just continued to get better, starting to play within himself. They're starting to do more, you know, QB runs for him, and that's in his wheelhouse. And he just looks like a totally different player. Yeah, I think you hit on a lot of good points. Look, they were still trying to figure themselves out early in the season. Right. There's no doubt about it. There was still an ongoing quarterback battle in week three. I mean, right. so I, I think it's hard to – you can't revamp the offense when you're playing three different quarterbacks and you're, you haven't decided on who you're going to play yet. Mm -hmm. Or who your guy's going to be, but I thought, and then once Milrow is the guy, he he's got to prove himself. Right. Everybody knew he could run, mm -hmm. so he had to prove himself a worthy passer, because then that's going to open up everything else. And, and right. I think what you're seeing now is 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 Milrow's more confident. Reese is more confident in Milrow, and the offensive you get, the offensive line is playing better. That that yeah. also helps. I mean, I don't that care helps. who you who you are if the offensive line is not playing well you're not going to play well right. so i just think it's a it's a multitude of things there's a lot of things going on out there and i, I just think everybody's playing better everybody's playing with more confidence and i think that's made evident with, with the success they're having on that side of the football yeah i agree stacy it's you know he he's starting to show himself now and he's improving the whole team as a whole is improved um and uh man it's, it's getting fun at the end of the year because you know that matchup in, in a few weeks, not only in in, in uh, Jordan Harry, but but in that SEC championship game, it's going to be a fun one. No doubt about it. All right, hey, that's going to wrap up our instant reaction show here on the Bleacher Report app. Thank you so much, Bleacher Report, uh, Report, for allowing us to do this each and every week. Uh, you yep. can catch mine and Jake's show, Tide Talk Live, on YouTube. 
So uh, also free and available on, on all the podcast platforms. So appreciate it if you check us out there as well. Uh, been a lot of fun, Jake. What a great win for Alabama, clinching the SEC West and punching their ticket to Atlanta for the SEC championship game. All right, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys real soon. And until then, roll tide. Roll tide.